glamping, obviously glamorous camping is uh, is a bit of a buzzword at the moment. But I had never heard of a yurt until a few years back when I was at an electric picnic um, and they had them for hire there. After doing some research I saw that they were a really popular holiday destination in the UK and all over Europe and I realised that there wasn't really anybody doing it in Ireland. And the Okay, well this is an example of a yurt and uh, this is one of the smaller yurts that we have on site and as you can see it's a round dome shape. It's made from wooden lattice work on the inside and then a heavy duty canvas on the outside. The yurt originates in Mongolia and it's a round dome shaped tent that sort of nomadic tribes live in and dissemble and move around. The walls are made of latticed wood and woodwork going to a, a wheel in the middle which gives it a, a nice dome shape and gives it lots of room inside. Uh, they're insulated with lamb's wool and they also have wood burning stoves inside so that they're good for all weathers. The yurts are quite difficult to put up. They can take anything up to a day to put one of the larger ones up. I get a lot of help from friends and family in the area, you know, everybody mucks in. It's an excuse for a get-together when, when things quieten down. And the same that marks the beginning of the season when everybody comes and lends a hand. Getting the banks to, to acknowledge the business plan and, and to understand the idea, you know, from, from a business plan sitting in front of them was quite difficult. But luckily I did, I did get funding to, to start the project at a time that was very difficult for new and existing businesses. The reaction from my family and friends was, was quite, um, they, they were quite worried for me obviously. Some family members begged me not to do it, um, but they're, they're very proud of me now and they've been so supportive. And I certainly couldn't have achieved what I've achieved without the, the help of friends and family. The business on a day-to-day, -day, it's quite busy all, all year round, even when there's no guest staying. The, the phone is always going, there's always emails to be answered. Um, it is a challenge at times because there's so many different roles to play. When I opened the business, I thought I would have three or four months of the year free and I thought that would be lovely, it would fit in with my passion for travelling and that I'd be off sunning myself in Asia in the winter time. But the reality of it is that as soon as your season ends in the end of October, um, you've got a lot of work to, to do getting ready for your next season, planning for your next season. A typical day would be the morning time, we'd be getting up and trying to see to the, the grounds. A lot of cleaning, a lot of laundry, a lot of ironing and making up beds, getting everything ready for new people coming in. If there's some massage to do, I do some of the therapies myself. It's nice for people to come and have a massage and just totally relax in this environment. It's a lovely holiday type for children who want to go camping with maybe reluctant parents. There's lots of trees, lots of wilderness for them to run around and explore. There's a little tree house in the fairy garden, there's campfire every evening. The children absolutely love the campfire, it's just one of their big highlights and it really makes their holiday. They just love toasting marshmallows in that fire or burning them as the case may be in the evening times. It's just something that really, really appeals to their sense of adventure. The kids today had it on from five o'clock because they couldn't wait because they enjoyed it so much last night. So just, yeah, just sitting around it, you know, and then as the evening gets a bit cooler, it's just a lovely way. Enjoy a drink by the campfire and listen to some music and chat and just relax. It's lovely. I think the freedom for the kids is great. They can just, you're not worried about them. They're just roaming around doing their thing. Rather than go to a hotel or whatever where the kids maybe wouldn't have as much freedom, this is a great opportunity to just get it out into the outdoors and try something really different. Teapot Lane is on the borders actually of Sligo, Leitrim and Donegal. I'm a Donegal woman myself. I, I was born and reared in Ballyshannon. I think it's a great place to locate my business because, you know, you're maybe 
five, six miles from, you know, a choice of beautiful beaches. Running the business certainly does have its ups and downs and you have days where you're tearing your hair out and you have days where you just feel so privileged to, to be able to do this and more of the positive really. Um, I just love waking up here every morning, it's such a beautiful place. I just love to be able to work from home, you know, I've got my dog around, I've got my family come visit. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I do have to pinch myself sometimes because it, it just does seem like the ultimate, the ultimate job.